going live. Hi again, everyone. How was your plunge into the Jurassic Oceans? I hope you're ready for more adventures and immersion as our next two speakers have the power to, and I quote, convert physical spaces into oniric universes where poetry, emotion, and learning emerge. Michelle and Caroline from the Creo Agency are going to share their experience of gamifying exhibitions and moving digital experiences out of the traditional screen. First, we have Caroline here. Caroline, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. Very well. Thank you. Good. And what time is it in Montreal right now? And what's the weather like? Actually, it's seven o'clock and it's a beautiful sunny day, 24 degrees in Montreal today. Very nice. Lovely. So now I'm going to leave you in the company of our lovely audience and the floor is yours. So hi, everybody. I'm, um, I'm glad to meet you today. Uh, my name is Caroline Julien. I'm a scientific communicator and uh, president uh, and founder of uh, Creo. And uh, I will be, in fact, I, I invite Michel, Michel Gros. Um, please uh, join me. Um, Michel uh, is also a scientific communicator, a scientific communicator and a producer at Creo. In fact, um, we work uh, 20 years ago, uh, we were on the uh, team, uh, Claude Benoit's team for the foundation of the Science Center of Montreal and this project uh, changed our lives. Uh, Michelle, uh, after became a, a um, content and education, chief of the content and education at the Science of Montreal and decided to found uh, CREO at the same time. And uh, Michelle stayed at the Science Center for about uh, um, 15 years before joining CREO uh, about three years ago. So today we're going to talk together about uh, how to design memorable experience through gamification. Uh, I will first uh, talk about the visitors, uh, how they mutate and uh, why they evolve. And then Michelle uh, uh, talk, will talk about uh, how the museum should diverse their experiences. And he will share our keys uh, to gamification, how to engage uh, the, aud the new audiences, and, but in a way that they will hurt, they will learn and uh, then we um, come back i will come back and think about the future and the impact of the covid 19 how, on how work so um creo creo is a production studio uh, we create memorable experiences for museums uh, science centers uh, and national parks uh, we have been doing this uh, since 18 years, so Creo is now an adult, uh, but we still live to love to play uh, and co-create. Uh, in fact, uh, we love to combine knowledge and games. One source of inspiration is the game Myst, uh, this graphic adventure which um, marked the video industry in 1993. Uh, when I played to uh, when I played the game, I thought, "Wow, this is a great game." But what if, what if the player would have to use their scientific knowledge and skills to solve the puzzle? What if the our knowledge was the key? Then we would have a great learning tool. I heard later on that some researchers had the same vision of learning, such as James Paul Gee wrote Good Games or Learning Machine in, in his book, uh, Good Video Games Plus Good Learning. For the researchers, James Polgi, presenting a written text to uh, young people of today, it's like giving a, a game instruction booklet without the game itself. The instructions are difficult to read, but this same book begins to be easier to read after playing the game because, because the content is associated with images, actions, and experience, dialogues, emotions. And then a few years later, as I said, um, I worked uh, with uh, at the Science Center of Montreal and 
this was also a game changer because and, and particularly when I when we opened, I I was just totally impressed about um, when when I saw the the kids around uh, one of the game I imagined first game I imagined uh, with with the team science center, and uh, I remember this bunch of young boy, but uh, young boys how they were totally engaged in the experience, engaged, you know, with all their muscles and how they were collaborating together to solve the puzzle. And uh, I was also impressed about how, what they learn and how they express our message in their own words. And so I said, again, <laughs> wow, uh, I want to do this. I want to do more of this. I want to, to speak this new language, their language. And I think, I think that we could continue to reinvent learning because we live in a world of change and we see that the public is also changing. And yes, in some way, visitors mutate. Um, they are born with the technology and they, they don't see the world as we do. Uh, they grew up with the video games uh, that use them to obtain feedbacks related to the success of their actions, earn points, um, reward benefits that measure uh, their progress. They're accustomed to choose their route according to their taste and to personalize their experience. And they love to collaborate, or compete with others. So they are so different that we have to review the way we transmit the knowledge. And it's not only their interest in video game that is involved. It's much deeper than that. It's that this changing world is changing the way young people think. Some goes as far as to say that the brains of the new generation change physically. And so consequently, the young people process the informations differently than the predecessors. And because of that, they have new expectations of learning and discovery tools. So when they come to museums, they, they need to make, to produce, to transform, to create. They love to explore, touch, and experiment. They, they like to move, being in action. They like to choose, decide, and express their identity. And they love to play. And because they are intuitive and visual, they expect Attracting, attracting tools and, and visual digital platforms, interactive and playful approaches that place them in an active posture. They, these, are part, these are part of the visitor's need, but what about the needs of the institutions for this? Uh, invite uh, my colleague, Michelle, who knows very well about this. Uh, uh, having created a whole bunch of exhibition uh, with the Science Center of Montreal before joining CREO. Um, so, Michel, please, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much, Caroline. I'm uh, very glad to be uh, with you uh, uh, this morning slash afternoon. So, um, uh, essentially, I'll be talking about uh, uh, the... Uh, how the institutions change, but also how uh, agency like us uh, try to meet visitors' demands. Um, institutions, of course, they look at, they have many goals now. They try to engage visitors in the real, the, the real world, the concrete world, and they wish to create wow effects. It's something that we've, uh, we are being asked very, very frequently. Uh, we want some wow. Um, institutions also de develop in parallel their social utility. So they try to enhance familial, social, collaborative and participative relationships and behavior among visitors. They also discover or rediscover the power of play, which has gained more than a touch of respectability these years. 
play can be used in individual experiences limited in space, but also in large and collective ones. For, exa for example, this is an educational program that we made for a popular culture museum in Quebec. It's designed like a life-size board games. Uh, board games are a very interesting source of inspiration for our team. And um, it consists in creating a timeline of objects from the museum collection. So it's very simple gameplay. It's inspired from the very popular uh, timeline uh, board game that you may uh, know. And here, our approach consists in integrating several codes of video games, like competition and collaboration. Uh, the same process of gamification, well, we can adapt it to an entire exhibition, which makes it very engaging and memorable. And uh, it's the main topic I'll be discussing in the next minutes. For example, with the Montreal Science Center and other partners, Creo co-developed an interactive traveling exhibition on the indigenous knowledge and innovations, which is very rich. Uh, the exhibition is called Indigenous Ingenuity. It's designed as a mission or a quest, and it integrates all the codes of video games, for example, immersion, problems to solve, collaboration, competition, uh, feedbacks, storytelling, clues from characters, ways to measure progress. The exhibition in parallel also uses many different technologies, like connected objects, interactive walls, multiplayer touch screens, mechanical interactive screens, virtual reality, sound toys, interactive and playful projection surfaces. Uh, we've put in the link a link to a video which explains the uh, exhibition, so I invite you to uh, consult it uh, uh, later on. It's, uh, I think it's well done. Um, how can we optimize then the engagement and learning through gamification? Well, our very creative team has been pursuing these goals for a while, and uh, I will share our toolbox which contains eight of these codes and how we can uh, we use them um, in recent or in future projects. The first key is to develop a mission or a quest which conveys meaning. Um, we, we love to call them meta quests or interactive quests. They can be very uh, engaging ways to encourage participation and they help to make sense out of complex topics and spaces, such as exhibitions, science, nature parks, and so on. They invite visitors to engage actively in self-guided journeys, which stimulate their engagement and reflection on society's issues. For example, here for the Port of Montreal, uh, Creo developed last year the exhibition All Aboard, uh, um, it's an interactive exhibition which invites visitors on a physical and digital adventure to discover the shipping cycle of goods from their point of departure to their final destination. So the mission is to import or, or export a cargo shipment within a time limit. V using a RFID card, the visitors have to solve a number of issues from planning to unloading to shipping. At each station, he has to complete a challenge in a minimal time which shows the importance of efficiency, which is also correlated to reducing the environmental impact, an important value for the ports now. So in such exhibitions, a second key is uh, how to measure progress. It's very useful and appreciated by visitors. However, it must be design designed very carefully to be at the same time engaging and simple. Simplicity is a key word here. Visitors cannot put the same effort to learn the gameplay than in a triple A video game, and the learning curve must be kept very short. For instance, here in the exhibition Indigenous Ingenuity, the visitor has simply to collect innovations from one station to the other. With the uh, RFID band, the visitors will trigger the interactive activities, and when he succeeds in the challenges, he wins these innovations. He is awarded at the end an indigenous value or quality according to the number and type of innovations he collected. Uh, in the All Aboard exhibition, we had a slightly more complex uh, way to measure progress. It shows the number of days needed to get through the different steps of the transport mission. A color code indicates the visitor's ship, uh, if, the, if the visitor's ship is late, if it's in advance or it's, if it's on time. 
I'd like to add that in this exhibition, there is no particular order to get from one station to the other. So it's not linear, which avoids the problem of everyone going at the same time at the same station, especially when a group is visiting and when you have a COVID-19, for example. Um, it's, uh, so it's per perfectly feasible to add a quest and to have a non-linear uh, uh, approach, which I recommend. Immersion, uh, another key, is a very major uh, aspect in today's cultural experience. experiences. Everybody wants immersion, probably because it's believed to increase attention, the visitor being transported into a stimulating a new environment. There are many ways to create immersion, and they don't have to be complex and expensive. For instance, here, an indigenous artist created a landscape that we transformed into interactive walls. The visitor can connect with the walls and trigger different projections like an animal or an indigenous divinity. By the way, in the, uh, in the link at the bottom of the screen, uh, we have also a small video on the yellow board exhibition that uh, you, uh, you could watch. Um, another key, collaboration. Of course, uh, anybody who's working in the education uh, system network knows that collaboration is uh, now recognized as a very important dimension of learning. It's justified. In the Indigenous Ingenuity exhibition, collaboration is a must since it's at heart of the Indigenous values. At right, for instance, visitors work together to build an igloo. Uh, it's not so obvious since every block is different from each other and has a specific and unique destination. At left, uh, a glimpse of a project that Creo is uh, now developing with the Montreal Cosmodome. It's a simulation of a space travel to Europa, Jupiter's moon. Every task has to be done in close collaboration. Every astronaut in the spaceship has a body in the control room and they have to work together to solve different issues. Another key, competition is still a powerful way to engage people. Even if it's not so popular, I think it's very efficient. Um, it's even more so efficient when we use physical connected objects like a bow and arrow competition in which you have to shoot virtual animals. At Creo, we love such ways to move out, the, move, really move out of the screen because the, these kind of experiences allow poetry to emerge. Technology is there, but you don't feel it, you don't see it. Humor is also very useful, especially when you lose. Here, the feedback uh, says, I've, been, I've seen better hunters. At least you make the animals feel safe. Uh, here, connected objects shows another key, the importance of immediate and short feedbacks. Even better, feedbacks that are not textual. For example, in this game, uh, you have to be quick. When the harpoon is launched at the right time, you catch the virtual fish. Games becomes, become really effective when uh, you are allowed to understand principles on your own. And above all, I would say that the best feedbacks do not give ready-made answers. Rather, they, give, they guide the player to find the answers by uh, themselves. Unpredictability creates surprise and emotion, so it's a, not another useful key. It gives the desire to replay. This is one of the exhibitions of the Future Science Center in Grenoble in the French Alps, which will open in two years uh, from now. Uh, in this project, we had to integrate the scientific principle of unpredictability that we know very well these uh, times of pandemics. For example, you can see here an earthquake simulator connected to a virtual slot machine and a lever. When you operate the lever, exactly, exactly like in a casino, you activate the slot machine. When the, the machine stops, well, a combination of symbols line up on the screen. So the simulator will then trigger either a light, either a strong earthquake or no earthquake at all. Here, what I like is the medium is the message, as uh, said uh, Marshall McLuhan. Uh, so the, the, the natural phenomena of, uh, of earthquake is unpredictable, as is the interactive game itself. Uh, my final slide uh, will give you some insight on another important key, which is delivering embedded messages or messages in an intrinsic way. 
the example here is from a project that we do in an audacious exhibition about shit. Uh, yes, we uh, now could develop a zone of a traveling exhibition for a large museum in Quebec City, the Musée de la Civilisation. Uh, our mandate is to develop a zone about the health and environmental issues caused by human waste. To uh, reach the target audience, young adults, we chose to develop an arcade of reconverted uh, vintage video game like Pac-Man and uh, Tower Defense. Um, here, uh, for example, the game well becomes a metaphor for the so the uh, instead of eating the small objects, uh, Pac-Man drops little poops that uh, can make himself sick. The ghosts stand for diseases like cholera or dysentery, and uh, you have to avoid them carefully. Without reading any texts, you understand that shit poses a big health problem in the world. Uh, the tower this defense game decide will take place in a water treatment plant. So you will have to stop undesirable objects like diapers to get gut in the filters, showing that you shouldn't drop anything in the toilets at home. In these two examples, well, game deliver built-in messages which convey information intrinsically, and I think it's the most efficient way to do it. Thank you very much. I will now invite Caroline uh, to conclude. Thank you, Michel. Um... I was uh, very happy that you talk about uh, games uh, for young adults because sometimes we hear that games are for children and and even if I talked a lot about uh, these uh, new problems, uh, um, everybody loves to play. And uh, I remember when we hope when we open uh, all aboard for the uh, Port of Montreal. I remember the uh, mediator that told me, you know, it's for everybody. Uh, there are some even uh, old people that comes and and they, they came out with the smile on their face so it's it's it's, it's great to hear that so some of these projects um, opened us a new way of thinking uh, the gamified approach uh, has so much success in the science center of montreal that uh, the institution decided to present it again uh, this tem temporary exhibition, uh, Ingenious Ingenuity, which is actually traveling uh, uh, all around Canada. Uh, the exhibition also won two awards, a new mix, the Excellence Award uh, of the Video Game Industry in Quebec, and a Cascade Award, the Best Interactive Exhibition in Canada, Category Large Institution, given by the, Sci uh, the Canadian Science Centre Association. For all these projects, um, it's not the technology that is the hero, it's the content. And it's how we choose the technology and the, the type of game that uh, we want to play to make sense uh, of the content and help to understand. Um, but now, with, with COVID-19, how could we reinvent again the visitor experience? We could certainly continue to gamify, but differently. We talk about COVID-19, post-COVID-19, as a low-touch economy shaped by new habits and new regulations. To understand these impacts, I love this mind map. Uh, you could find it at uh, lowtoucheconomy.com. Uh, maybe, Michelle, you can share the link. Um, I have uh, used this uh, to think about how COVID will affect uh, our company and our industry. Uh, the impact of travel restrictions and how we'll have to change the way we collaborate with our international partners. Uh, the impact of bank bankruptcies, massive bankruptcies and mass unemployment and how this could impact uh, the families we want to reach. Um, the impact of new legislations. Uh, with uh, limit large gathering and uh, the impact of social distancing and hygiene precautions based on this, how could we transform the visitor's experience we imagine? And then we realized that we were already, already developing new kind of experiences, no touch and low touch experiences. The first one is um, a, a gamified floor, um, you could uh, uh, click on, uh, on the button uh, maybe later or, or now to, to, uh, to explore uh, the way 
the kids were so much engaged in this experience, it is that we, we project the visual on the floor, which become our screen, and we use motion sensors to get an interactive experience. So it's also a game, an association game here. We, uh, the kids have to um, uh, put their body on the right uh, uh, round while some of them uh, present uh, problems, uh, other inventions and other uh, inventors. So it's an association type game, but it's also a competition between two groups. Um, when you see on the video, there's lots of, of uh, of, of engagement uh, and lots of kids, but uh, this kind of game can also be played alone with small groups uh, or with to maintain the social distancing. Um, we it worked very well, and what we're actually adapting uh, this uh, interactive for other museum with other content and, and games. The second one, pro it's uh, the second project is developed with the. Aquarium, uh, l'Aquarium Tropical de la Porte Dorée in Paris, France, uh, with whom we are actually working in the development uh, of a digital, interactive, and gamified aquarium. And we explored together uh, new tools to co-create uh, because we we work in the middle of the crisis. And we uh, discover uh, different platforms such as Strategizer, which lets us work together as if we were in the same room with virtual post-its. So we were able to share our knowledge about the public and co-design our value proposition. Another very similar tool, uh, but uh, even more complete is Mural. Um, and, M U R A L, which uh, I am certain we will continue to use after the confinement. So together uh, we uh, imagine um, an immersive, a non-intrusive experience without a virtual reality headset, uh, which requires manipulation and cleaning. You don't want. Um, we prefer to use projections to create a spectacular production with ambient sounds and sound effects. Uh, we enhance the uh, immersion experience, but we don't want a passive audiovisual uh, experience. We want an experience you don't want to touch to interact with, but very interactive. Free, contactless interactions based on body movement uh, captured by smart cameras. So as I move in collaboration with the family, I connect with the ocean. As I move, I connect, for example, with the food of the whale. And as I move, I understand their behavior and their problems. I, so I learn, I learn without reading any words or without any mediation. We prefer action-based learning. So our dream is to develop with a group of institutions um, an intuitive, immersive, educational, spectacular, memorable experience with the giant of the sea that gives the taste to learn and protect. So thank you very much. Um, we are very glad to uh, share you all of this and we Désolé, will be... je ne suis pas en mesure de vous donner votre position géographique actuelle. <laughs> That's funny, it's Siri. Sorry about that. <laughs> so uh, we would be happy to meet you without Siri at, uh, <laughs> at uh, the, um, uh, the app uh, Meetup uh, of Excite. Uh, the, the Excite app at the meetup uh, with Michelle uh, in the in the next uh, few minutes in the coffee break before the next presentation. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much, Michelle and Caroline. It was really great, um, really great to see experiences stretching from MetaQuests in Montreal to one of Jupiter's moons, even to Pac-Man. What a blast from the past. <laughs> and a really total variation. So thank you. Have a lovely rest of the day. And I'm sure some people will be joining you in your meetup soon. So bye for now.
Thank you very much. Now, some of you might want to stretch your legs after three intense but exciting presentations. We're going to take a 40 minute break now. Um, so go, go grab your favorite drink. And if you're feeling social, you can use the Excite app, as Kathleen suggested, to meet other attendees or to join a meetup. So some of our speakers you can see here, this is Michelle's. And we also have one from Paolo as well at 2.45. So if you want to join those, then go ahead. Um, we'll see you back here at 3.15, so in 40 minutes from now, for the Corona Proofing Museum Interactive Session from YIP. So enjoy your break. <laughs>